Hello and welcome to another home edition of Telehoma's Cooking. I'm your host, Kelly Lepchinski, and today we're going to be making a white borscht. Now this is a sour soup that I have wanted to do on this program for a while, but I'll tell you why I didn't. The very first episode of Telehoma's Cooking that I did, we did a loaded baked potato soup, and I didn't want you to think this was going to become Telehoma's Cooking Soup. Now there's a reason I decided to visit it now. And mainly that's because since we've been on lockdown for COVID-19, we have run the gamut. We've done soups all the way to desserts. And it's a good time to come back around to soup. Now, as I'm recording, the governor's safer at home order has been lifted and people all over the state and in Tullahoma are returning to work. And that includes us at TUA, which means this may be the last home edition of Tullahoma's cooking that I get to do. And this is a recipe I've decided I would much rather do in my own kitchen than in the studio because it is a multiple day affair. And it was just easier to get this started yesterday and join you with the soup in progress. Now what I have happening here, I have eight cups of water, two quarts boiling because I'm going to be putting some kielbasa sausage into that boiling water. Now, first things first, let me bring in my makeshift counter and show you what I mean by kielbasa because if you have been buying these prepackaged things this is sometimes called kielbasa this one even says polska kielbasa no no that it's a perfectly serviceable food not for this you actually want to get a fresh white kielbasa now in Tullahoma this isn't meant to be a, an advertisement for one of our grocery stores, but let's just be fair about it. You can't get ringed kielbasa here in town. And there's only one place that sells the fresh kielbasa. Now I will be using ingredients from grocery stores all across Tullahoma in this episode, but the kielbasa, there's only one place you can get it and that is Publix. Now the recipe is based on a ring of the white sausage. Obviously this is not sold in rings, but a ring is generally a pound. And this right here was about a pound of sausage. So even though we're using links, the recipe should still come out just fine. I have my water boiling and we're just gonna boil those sausages for longer than they actually need to cook through. They'd be cooked in less than 20 minutes. We're gonna give them about 40 minutes. Now this is the day one of the process. I've already done it, we're gonna to move to that later, but I want you to see what, where we start. You start by boiling the sausages. And like I said, we're gonna give that 40 minutes of boiling time so that all the goodness that's in that casing that seeps out, if you've ever boiled a fresh sausage, there's fat and there's flavorings that you can already start to see an oil film at the top of the water that's coming off of that sausage. That's gonna keep developing for the entire time it's boiling. And when that is done, on day one, you take your cooked sausage out, set it aside, you will be using it on day two, and you take your water that you boiled the sausage in and put it aside into the refrigerator overnight so that all of those fats can rise up and separate from the water and any solids from the sausage itself can sink to the bottom. Now here is what that looks like. I did this yesterday with the first load of sausages. And I only did a small batch just so I could show you this and I did it in a glass jar or a glass bowl so that you could see. We have some of the solids from the sausages down there at the bottom. And we have a little bit of a floating fat content up there at the top. And you would just skim that off, strain the solids out and what you get to work with on day two is a nice flavored broth without all of that fat, without all that leftover solids. This is the broth we're actually going to use. This needs to be sifted or yeah, strained. And uh, I'll do that at a commercial break, add it into what we're doing, and we'll just uh, have a little extra water. This is now the base for our soup broth. But before we get to adding the soup broth to a pot and making it warm, we're going to 
get some other ingredients going in the bottom of the pan. This is the pan I'm going to use for cooking our soup today. And I'm just going to bring that up to about medium heat, enough to start sauteing with a little bit of butter, two or three tablespoons there, probably about two. We're going to get that butter going so that I can saute a little bit of garlic. I think I did four cloves here and a little bit of onion. Now in this recipe, you know I usually use white onion. This recipe actually called for yellow onion and therefore I have yellow onion. Given the amount of broth that I have to work with, I didn't feel I needed a full yellow onion. This is about a half of a yellow onion. So we're just going to get going in there and get to saute really well. And as soon as we have got the garlic and the onion cooked down to where they are soft, if you've ever sauteed vegetables before, you know what I'm talking about, but you just want to make them lose that crispness, get a little bit, uh, just a little bit warm through evenly. You don't want to do this in the broth because you want to make sure they have cooked evenly through. Now, I don't need to pay that much attention to them while they're doing this right now. So I'll tell you what our next step will be. While these are sauteing, we're going to be adding our regular broth and then some additional ingredients. Now, I told you this was a sour soup. In this is an Eastern European dish that you traditionally see right around Easter. And I'll get, to, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And in Poland, particularly, what starts the sourness is the same thing, same concept as, say, the sour of a sourdough bread. There is a sour starter that is made from fermenting bread. That is not a process that we're going to duplicate here or replicate here. So we're going to add a little bit of sour on the front end with a little bit of vinegar, just a little bit of vinegar. We will do that to taste a little bit later on. I've got about two tablespoons of vinegar that we'll be adding in here. I've also got horseradish that will uh, be added in as soon as we get these sauteed down and our broth in here. And then finally, this isn't in all of the recipes for this, but I find that it is very, very helpful to add at least one cubed potato. Just peel it, cube it down. It doesn't even have to be a uniform size. Uh, whatever size you're willing to live with in your final product or I want, want puree at the end. That is completely up to you. I don't mind leaving the potato chunks, but I do like having the starch from the potato in my soup. So I've got just one peeled russet potato because this is all of the water that we're working with. You can double this recipe. I am I'm just showing you an example here for one. So we're going to stick to two quarts of water, one russet potato. And you may see my potatoes I have covered with just a touch of marjoram, just enough to coat them. And our sausages are starting to boil there. That's wonderful. I'm going to bring them down to just a simmer now that they've got a good boil going because we are leaving them in there so long, we don't need it to be at the highest boil. All right, we've got a good saute starting now on our onions and garlic, and it's, ooh, it's starting to smell really nice. So this is just gonna be the base that we add our broth to. We'll also have some salt and pepper that will go in at this stage. And again, remember, we're already on day two. This is day one happening over there. This is day two where we're getting our butter garlic and onion ready for the water that will be or the broth that will have come from putting that water in the refrigerator overnight. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead with that now and put our two quarts of reserved sausage water right into that pot with the butter, onions, and garlic. Okay. We're going to add two tablespoons of vinegar. Now this isn't the only sour element, but I'll tell you about that uh, aspect when we get to it. We're gonna add in our one tablespoon of horseradish, and I can almost guarantee that when we get to the 
uh, season to taste portion of the episode, I'll be adding a little bit more of that. And then we put in our potatoes. Again, with that little bit of margarine. And that may have sounded like margarine. It's marjoram. It's a native of, or native, a relative of uh, oregano. Not a lot of taste difference. You could substitute one for the other and probably not even notice it. And then, of course, salt and pepper. And like I tell you always, I start with a quarter of a teaspoon if I don't have a, a amount that's listed in the recipe. Now, in this case, I've made this several times and I can tell by the amount of water we're working with. I'm actually going to start with a half a teaspoon this time because I really feel we're going to end up adding salt and pepper at the end if I don't go ahead and use it now. And we may still end up adding it at the very end. But there we go. So what we're going to do here, we've got our broth started and I'm just going to put a lid on that and we're going to let that cook. We're going to let it come to a boil because we've got the potatoes in there that need to cook. And as soon as we get to, I may even watch that. As soon as we get to a boil, I'm going to knock that temperature down and let the whole thing simmer for a little while. And then we're going to let it cook until the potatoes are tender and able to break apart easily. The same kind of thing that you would wait for if you were making a mashed potato. You're looking for that soft potato that you can either take out and puree or mash into littler bits for your soup. So while we're doing that, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we'll do the next part of our sour addition to make our white borscht. And we'll see you after that. Okay, welcome back to Telahoma's Cooking. And we have our broth with our potatoes at a nice simmer here. And I'm going to show you, at this point, you could take this out and puree it, run it through a blender, make it all a smooth consistency. I just go ahead and mash my potatoes down. They're breaking up easily. And it'll just leave little bits of potato in there. It also keeps me from having to use a uh, blender or a food processor while we're here on camera, but it really works perfectly fine. And you'll see why when we get to how you serve this soup. But so we've mashed down our potatoes just a little bit while they're still breaking up into that sauce or into that broth. And now back here on day one, our sausages have finished cooking. And I want to show you what the white sausage looks like. And I want to get it out of this water. Okay. So this is your nice plump cooked white sausage. Now, it's mainly going to be pork in a kielbasa, so it's a white meat. You expect it to become a white sausage when it is cooked. And we'll just get those out of the water. And I've got a paper towel in that dish right there just to catch some of that liquid that's coming off of them. Okay. Now, oh, I can smell that vinegar. Oh, it smells so good. I know, but it does. So this pan, I always turn off the wrong burner. I want to make sure I turn off the right one. This is the pan that you would now on day one, let cool down, put in the refrigerator until you can get to that skimming the fat off of it. We are now working on day two. We're done with that right now. But the sausages, you would also have put aside for day two. And we're going to let them cool down just a little bit before we come back to what you do with them. For the meantime, I'm going to turn this back down to a lower simmer. If you did see our baked potato, loaded baked potato soup episode, you probably recognize this bowl full of sour cream. I mentioned that usually there is a sour starter for this soup. Well, in addition to the vinegar that we use, the other substitute for that sour starter that we're going to use is sour cream. And we're also going to help thicken this up. Now, this is a cup of sour cream and two tablespoons of, <laughs> of flour, which will then help thicken our sour that will go into our soup. So we just mix those two things together. And then what we do is we will make a slurry. Now, you saw us do this before. I'm not going to demonstrate again why you want to make a slurry. But just in case you didn't see that episode, I'm not going to demonstrate what happens if you don't. 
but I will tell you why we do, okay? Sour cream is temperature sensitive. And if you were to put boiling hot water, put it into boiling hot water, put boiling hot water into it, it's going to shock the sour cream. And that will make the sour cream curdle. And although it will still be edible, it will not be attractive and it won't be appetizing. So we're going to slowly add, and I've got a half a cup measurement here. We're going to grab some of that hot liquid, okay, get it away from boiling, and just in small doses, in fact, I'm even going to run it down the side of the bowl to help cool it on the way in. Just add little bits at a time so that we can slowly start to bring that sour cream up to a little bit warmer temperature without shocking it to a boiling temperature. All right, so you can see we're getting a nice smooth slurry there, but they're obviously not enough liquid yet to think we've brought it up. I did grab some solids in that cup, so I'm gonna knock them back down there and grab a little more liquid. And just keep doing that same thing. Slowly add in some of that hot water and mix it in to get the sour cream used to the idea of being a little bit warmer, step by step. And this was sour cream, by the way, that uh, I had out in this bowl at room temperature for quite a while. So we're not trying to shock it from a refrigerator temperature. We are going from room temperature. But there's still a vast difference between room temperature, which is about 68, and boiling, which is over 100. So we're just making that difference up. Again, I'm going to get rid of some of those solids and just add liquid in. And so we've got our broth. You see a little bit of that marjoram made the transfer there. And I'm getting a little bit bolder with how much liquid I use each time because it has had the opportunity to warm up and not be shocked from completely room temperature. We are getting a little bit warmer slurry in there. Now you see this nice glossy liquid where it's no longer a sour cream consistency and it's a little bit runnier, a little bit glossier. We're probably safe to put that in the soup as it is right there. I like to be extra safe in these situations. And I'm gonna put at least one more spoonful of warm liquid, okay? Into our sour cream and get that mixed up. And then once we've got that all good and mixed, it's just gonna go straight into the soup and it will get boiled with the rest of the soup while we prepare the next part of serving your white borscht. So I think that is ready to go in. Now again, I've got a pretty rolling boil there, so I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit if I can. And I know you can't see into the pot here, that's okay, I'll show it to you when we're ready to serve it. It's just a boiling liquid at this point anyway, not much to see. So we're just gonna get all that slurry in there. I'm gonna make a big old mess and get as much of it out of that bowl as you can because there's no point wasting those ingredients. All right, and there you go. Mix that into your broth. And then I'm gonna show you just one more thing that we're gonna do before we take the next commercial break because I wanna prepare this. In the last segment, I wanna be getting this soup ready to serve. All right. Oh, and while we're at it, I could have put this in the slurry, but we just added another cup worth of ingredients. I'm gonna add more salt and pepper. This time I'm back down to my quarter teaspoons that I could have added to that sour cream just to maintain our seasoning throughout. The other thing we're going to do is turn on this pot right back here and get a little bit of oil warm, okay? And we're gonna take these sausages that we have cooked through. They are perfectly fine to eat this way, but we're gonna let that heat come up. Ooh, bottom of the pan might be wet. We're gonna let that pan come up to heat and we'll come back and heat up these sausages. Just give them a little bit of a browning on every side. And we'll do that right after this. We'll be right back. 
and welcome back to Tullahoma's Cooking. We are in the final stages of our white borscht, which is an Eastern European soup, which is traditionally seen around Easter. Now, I haven't explained the Easter significance, and I was planning on doing that now. For the interest of time, because the sizzling was a little bit loud, I went ahead and browned up our white sausage while we were taking a commercial break. These are now cooked and ready to go. I'm just going to take them out of the pan to get some of that grease off of them now. But nice, warm, browned sausage is a key component to this dish. And, of course, our broth. <laughs> Now, I can tell, I'm pretty sure I'm going to want either a little bit more vinegar or a little bit more horseradish. Some of that key smell that I was getting before I put the sour cream in there has died down a little bit. And this, of course, was our day one broth that we would put a lid on and put in the refrigerator and wait till the next day to start this process all over again if we still had the leftovers from the Easter feast. And that's the point of this recipe. The at Easter, you've just come off 40 days of Lent, which for the most devout means a time of fasting and a lot of foods come off of the table during those 40 days and they all return on Easter. So before you bring them to your table, a lot of the most devout take a whole basket worth of the foods that they're going to prepare at Easter, your breads, your eggs, your sausages, cheese, butter, potatoes, whatever you're going to cook with, you take two your church and have blessed before you make the meal. Now, once you've had a big meal of meat and sausage and egg, and you've had your colored eggs, the next day you're bound to have a lot of leftovers. And this broth is the perfect way to use these leftovers. Now, I have already prepared a little Easter basket back here with some of the sausage that we'd already I cooked yesterday, or maybe earlier today, that I pre-cooked. I ordered ham. I didn't make a full ham, and I didn't realize I was getting deli sliced, but there you have it. And then you've got your hard-boiled eggs sliced and ready to go. Now, traditionally, you would also maybe have a rye bread I have a or, or challah. There's also Easter bread with raisins. I wouldn't put that in the soup. But what you traditionally do is take, go to your leftovers table and pick out a few of the items you would like in your bowl. There may be things you like, there may be things you don't like. You may not want rye. I'm just going to go ahead and dump all of these in here. So I want some sausage in mine. I'll put a little bit of ham in mine and a full egg right there is now the meat for, I dropped some ham, might as well put it in there. Now the meat that that broth is going to go over. How do we know that the broth is ready? Well, the one thing you want to see is if it coats the back of a spoon. And you can see it does. But now we want to taste it. Okay, it's supposed to be sour. It shouldn't be unpleasantly sour. So I definitely have that sour. I definitely have... Um, I definitely taste the horseradish. I myself could use a little more horseradish and I wouldn't mind a little more vinegar either because you really don't want to come away from this going, mm, it tastes like potato water. You really want that tang and that flavor. So I'm going to add just a little bit more vinegar to mine. Okay. And I could probably add horseradish, and this is this is a key thing too. Horseradish generally goes into the basket and is put on the table as one of these ingredients. So that if this is not tangy enough for you, but it may be tangy enough for someone else at your table, they can just add horseradish to their own dish. And that may be exactly what I do here. I'll just, ooh, it was ready to go. Dollop a little bit of horseradish on my ingredients and if you like wasabi it is not quite that hot but it is a very similar that sort of a heat if you're not familiar with horseradish it's that same sort of a very uh, gripping flavor so now i just have sausage ham and egg 
and I will take some of this broth and just spoon it over. And that is Polish Easter soup. Now let's see how it tastes. Just mix it all up in there. Grab a little bit of egg. Grab a little bit of that sausage. Mm-hmm. It is so good. If you like um, things like sauerkraut, that same sort of vinegar, vinegary back taste. But what you're really getting mostly is just something that makes a soup out of all those savory ingredients. And it is so good. I do hope you'll give it a try. Don't let the fact that it's sour turn you off. It's really, really a nice soup and you don't get a lot of other things like it. All right, so that's it for this episode. Probably the next time you see me, we'll be back in the studio. So thank you for watching me at home and we'll see you next time on Home is Cooking.